In this video, we'll review basic materials inside 3D Studio Max. I'm beginning inside Photoshop to show you how to set up a material of your own making. Whether you make that uh, material by painting inside Photoshop or generate it from photography, either way you need to be certain that it'll tile. It would be to go to the filter pull down, pull down to other, and find offset. This given material here is a thousand pixel square, so if I use a 500 pixel offset, what will happen is the material will move in 500 pixels in both the vertical and horizontal direction. What we should find is that there's no visible seam in the center of this tile. You can tell that previously it's been painted over by careful examination, but we don't see a sharp edge seam would be the equivalent of the left and right hand and the top and the bottom edges of this image coming together um, here in the center of the screen. Other important things that you need to think about if you're generating your own material are to produce specular and glossy and bump map patterns that could be used um, inside your material assembly. In this particular material I've also added some additional information to make it obvious that we've actually got a bump map. Three maps were generated out of this, one for specular, one for diffuse color, and one for the bump and highlights. Inside 3D Studio, I've got a simple box geometry that I've created for the purposes of testing this material. I'm going to go to my Material Editor pull-down, and if you're in versions 2011 or 2012, now when you click on the Material Editor button, you'll find either Compact or Slate Material Editor. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm using the Compact Material Editor. In the Material Editor, we see that it's broken up into three zones. At the upper portion is a kind of matrix um, of material swatches that you can use to mix and create the surfaces that will be used in your model. In the middle portion of the menu, you'll find a series of buttons that allow us to navigate to various features inside the Material Editing interface. In the lower portion of the Material Editor browser, you'll see that there are a series of rollouts, not unlike you find elsewhere in 3D Studio Max, that allow us to make adjustments to diffuse, reflection, opacity, and so forth inside individual materials. Also take note that my material editor is currently set for mental ray. Should you want to be working in mental ray, you need to be certain that your material browser ends up uh, projecting like this when you first open it. If it doesn't do so, confirm that you're in mental ray by going to the rendering setup, and pulling down to the lower portion of the rendering setup menu to find assigned renderer. Inside assigned renderer you should see that the production renderer is set to mental ray. If not, click on the button immediately adjacent to the mental ray render um, production window here and you'll find other options that may be available to you. For example, including third-party renders like V-Ray. Now that I have my material editor open, I'm going to create a material using the three concrete swatches uh, that I previously set up. Underneath the diffuse rollout inside this new material that I'm selecting here, I'm going to come over to the color area. I could simply just click on the color swatch and change it to be something else and drag that color onto the box and now we see have a yellow box. Or we can bring in information from the outside, such as the roster art that I generated inside Photoshop, by clicking on the None button immediately adjacent. When we do that, a Material Map browser pops up that allows us to select between options such as what I'm going to use here, a bitmap, or a series of parametric procedural maps. One commonly used parametric procedural map is the brick pattern that we see up above here in the interface. This is a brick pattern that is derived by a mathematical formula and it's preset and you can make adjustments to the size of the brick, the stacking pattern, the size of the grout, the color, the variance in color, and so forth. I'm going to be using a bitmap for my material, so I've selected that. I'm going to click OK. Once I do that, the browser pops open uh, to reveal materials that are located inside your individual machine. You can trace down the path to these files and then use them as the surface pattern uh, for your material. I have this concrete one diffuse pattern that I just created. I'll go ahead and select that and click OK. At this level, um, I've branched down into the diffuse channel of this material that I'm setting up. 
and inside here we can make adjustments to the material's tiling and whether it mirrors or not, its angle, and so forth. If you're inside this level of material editor, you may want to confirm what material you have. You can do so just by clicking view image. And of course you'll see the concrete pattern here that I generated. Let's go ahead and close that. If you ever want to change this to some other uh, surface pattern, simply click on the bitmap button here and allow you to trace down a path to some other map. It's important to make note that the material that's being referenced here, the image that's being referenced, um, is externally referenced and is not embedded inside the file. You need to make sure that the path to this file is maintained so if the file is picked up and relocated on a new machine the material will still be findable. Not to worry though, if you do misplace a material you can always rewire and relocate uh, the material so that once again the surfaces render properly. Once we've got our map loaded in we want to go back to parent and at the parent level we can now branch down into other channels within our material assembly. I'm going to add in some information that I want to show up in the bump. So I find the bump button here, let's click on none and this will also be a bitmap and I've set up my same concrete uh, pattern to have a bump and we see right here there it is and once again if we want to view to see exactly what we're getting this is the pattern that I have created let's close that and if you should want to change the path once again the same thing it's important um, for you to take note that the offset size and tiling on the bump needs to stack up with the same information that was produced for diffuse since the individual dimples and creases inside the concrete correspond to uh, the color patterns that are in the diffuse um, I want to make sure that the sizing and tiling of both of these are the same. Okay so now that we have that material set up we want to make sure that it shows up inside our viewport. Well you'll notice it still shows up as yellow inside here and if I return to the map level of my um, diffuse color there's a small button here that says show standard map and viewport. If this is selected you'll see that the material now is revealed on the surface of my box. Now you have to choose, you can't see all of the uh, material channels simultaneously here in the viewport. You can only see that when you do a full rendering. So I don't actually see my bump pattern. If I do want to confirm the bump patterns there, then we can move up, over, and down into our bump pattern. And we can ask for this to currently be revealed um, inside the viewport and here you can see what the bump pattern is. Now when it comes to bump and specular and glossy and these other ways of modifying the diffuse color it's based in large part on contrast. So white is always going to come forward and black will recede. What we'll end up seeing when this is rendered is that the black areas will become a depression and the white areas from the the web dingbacks that were used here um, in the text uh, will actually pop out Let's see what this looks like if we go ahead and render it. You'll see the rendering, if you look at it carefully, that um, the text from the dingbats, uh, because it was done in white, pops off the surface of the concrete as if it was cast in place. You'll also notice that the, the recesses and pits and cracks inside the concrete, uh, those actually go in the negative direction, and the ridges in the concrete, they pop out in the positive direction. This is all because of the contrast between black and white. In addition to placing materials on the surface of geometries, they also have to be controlled in terms of their tiling. Now part of this can be accomplished directly inside the material, but the dilemma with that is it's global. So if there are other geometries with the same material, they would get the same kind of tiling. If we look back down inside the diffuse color channel, we can see here that there's an offset, a size, a mirroring or a lack of mirroring, tiling or lack of tiling, angle and so forth. It is possible to deal with tiling right inside this location. You'll notice here if by making adjustments to the tile I'm seeing an increase in the number of tiles because I've reduced the horizontal uh, size of the tile. We could also turn tiling off or we could have tiling be mirrored from one uh, tile to the next. In addition the angle of the tile could be adjusted 
in either the UV or W direction. UV and W corresponds to the X, Y, and Z um, of the surface. In lieu of this, we can place a UVW modifier on top of a geometry and carefully make our adjustments to the surface without having to compromise the material or its ability to be used in other geometries.